Well, this morning I want to talk about we are people of promise. How many people know that God's given us lots of promises? Precious, precious, precious promises. And uh, we, are, we are children of promise because God has made promises to us and he's made promises about us. He's made uh, promises about us and he's made promises to us. And when we can somehow or other break all the strongholds, and I know we speak a lot about this, but obviously there are things that are hindrances to humanity. There are things that hinder you and I because we are body, soul, and spirit. And so there's a flesh man in there that has to be conquered. Our flesh man will try to triumph over the spirit man. The flesh man will try to control the spirit man. The flesh man will try to tell uh, the spirit man his limits and what he's capable of doing and what he can't do. But God says that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. Do you believe that today? And so there's things that we've got to break. So we are children of promise because God has made promises to us and he's also made promises about us. He said to us, he said, I am going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. We know that God's not talking about a physical building. We know that he's not got his apron on and he's out there building a building. But I believe that we, the church, we, the people here, are the church. You are the church, amen? This building is not a church, it's a building. But we, when we come into it, it becomes a church because we, the church, come into it. And each and every one of us are really the church. And so what Jesus is really saying here, he's saying, I will build you. And if I can, I get this revelation, and when I started to realize that, I really understood that God wants to, by His Spirit, build me so as that the gates of Hades would not prevail against me. So as that I could be strong enough to withstand whatever the enemy put at me. Whatever the enemy tried to do, that I would have the power of God in me. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So I believe there that God says, I want to build you so the gates of Hades or whatever the enemy wants to throw at you will not prevail. Friend, that is some promise. If we could just grab that, I want to tell you there's enough in that today that will cause you to overcome, that would cause you to triumph over every work of God, of the enemy. The promises of God are yes and amen. It says in 2 Corinthians 1.20. You can read that at your leisure. They're not written in a book uh, so people could say, that's what I could be. And I think for too long, the church, in, in a sense, we've thought that's what we could be. No, friends, we've got to change the way we think. That's who I am. That's who I am. Not that's what I can be, but that's who I am. You see, the greater one is already in me. I'm not waiting for him to come. It's already in me. But what I've got to do is I've got to learn to allow the manifestation of what's on the inside of me to overcome what's on the outside of me. What the flesh man is trying to say, what the flesh man is trying to produce. The Bible says, if the devil had known what he was doing he, when we had Jesus on the cross, he would never have allowed it to happen. He thought he had the victory, as, as we're hearing in, in the communion today. He thought he had triumphed over the move of God. He thought he'd done that. And he might even be thinking that he's got you where he wants you. He might even have you know you thinking, or he might even think that he's got you in a place where you are defeated. But I want to tell you that the greatest victory is yet to happen around your life. As we break free from every lie of the enemy and we realize the power of God. The promises of God are yes and amen. That's their true amen. They're, they're true. You know, sometimes we've failed, we've made mistakes. Anybody ever made a mistake? Anybody ever failed? But you know, see, God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He used people that have made mistakes and things like that. And, and, you know, we are peculiar people. I heard John Austin uh, this morning speaking about uh, women. How many people know that women are a little bit different to some fellows? And, and, and he said that, 
You know, he and he, they were having a, a meal or something like that, and he and his wife, and there was another lady there, and they were chatting away, and he got a bit bored. So he excused himself from the table, and he went in somewhere to watch um, the, a football match. He said he came out three hours later, and there they were still sitting at the table chatting. And, and he said to him, he said, have you been somewhere? Have you got up? Have you? And they said, no. You, you, you've been sitting here for three, all this time. He said, oh, yeah. He said, we've just been chatting. And then he said, what have you been chatting about? You know what they said? Nothing. <laughs> God <laughs> uses different people. We're all, all very different. And though I can't understand some things about my wife, you know, we are all different. And the, the, the things that are important to Nancy, they drive me crazy. The, 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 the detail. If somebody rings me up and says something, there's always four questions that I never asked. <laughs> but anyhow, it's my turn. <laughs> I've just made some mistakes and I just made one then. <laughs> See... We are all different, but what we've got to understand is that we've got the same spirit on the inside of us. And we've got the giftings of God, and we've got the anointing, and we've got the purpose. We are people of promise, and we are people of purpose. There's a purpose and there's a promise that God wants to get through in our lives. And I, I just found that I, I really want to just open a scripture to you to, this morning. If you'd have a look with me in the book of Romans chapter 4, and perhaps it may help us to understand why sometimes we don't really enter into everything that God has for us or, or we don't really understand. Sometimes, you know, the answer could be that far away and we stop. If God said it, hell will have to freeze over before it won't happen. Amen? If God said that he's going to build his church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, the gates of Hades will not prevent it prevail against God's church. If he says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed, well, I want to tell you, nothing can stop that. The only thing that can stop that is wrong thinking. And we, because we, the way we are built with body, soul, and spirit, our flesh man argues with our spirit man. And if this flesh man can take us in control, we will live in lack. We will live far below. We can do things and carry on. But this scripture is an amazing scripture. We've heard it so many times. And, and it's all about a man by the name of Abraham and a woman whose name is Sarah, who had a promise that they would become the father of many nations. That this man out of him would flow so many things. The only problem is, is, is that Sarah was barren. The only problem is, is that there was no life in her and, and she'd never been able to produce. So in verse 17, this is how this man and this woman broke through. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That is a very, very important part of the scripture. God, who calls those things who do not exist as though they did. The other week we were talking about having God kind of faith. And friend, because God has made a promise to us, we've got to cause and claim that promise as if it is alive and existing right now. Friend, I believe today that healing is flowing even though we may not see the manifestation of it. God in his time will bring it to pass, I believe. Because I don't believe that there's anything wrong with God. I've said this many, many times. There is nothing wrong with God. There's nothing wrong with the promise. There's nothing wrong with the, whatever God says. The thing is, we the church have been lulled to sleep. The enemy has stolen from us. And it's time of restoration. It's time that the truth would get inside us because it's the truth that will make us free. Is it okay to say that? And so here we find this, uh, who gives life to the dead 
and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that Abraham became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Friend, I want to say this. Friend, I believe that we will become what God says we will become. Amen? We will be the church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. I'm not saying just us. I'm talking about the church that's alive and well on planet Earth today. They that believe in God. God is doing a work in you the same as He did a work in Abraham and Sarah as He gave the promise to them. It took a long time before the promise was fulfilled because God had to take things out of them so as that the unadulterated truth could enter into them that they could become what God said they would become. Don't, don't, don't get upset when God starts to chasten us, when God starts to move on us and starts to work on us because it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that will work in our lives to bring us to the place where we can get under that spout where the glory comes out, where we can be receivers of His divine nature, where we'll see the manifestation of everything God says He will do come to pass. Amen? That's worth getting excited about. But listen to that. Who did not do contrary in hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many ta- uh, nations, according to what was spoken. That what was spoken over him is no different to the word of God that's spoken over us. Is that true? Hey? <laughs> the word that was spoken over Abraham is no different to the word that was spoken to us. Maybe different, but it's no different. <laughs> May not be the same thing. I don't know if Nancy's going to have a have an Isaac and no, you know what I mean. But the promises of God are yea and amen. What God's talking about this end time church will come to pass, just the same as what God spoke over Abraham and Sarah came to pass. It will come to pass. Amen. I hope I'm making sense here. I'm not making much sense to myself. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, his own lack that was already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Listen to this. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, who being fully convinced that what God had promised God was able to perform. Now, I I pray that you can catch what I'm saying here. If we understand and and we look at the life of Abraham, if we look at the life of Sarah, when God spoke to Abraham, his name was Abram. Then God came and he made a promise to him and he said, you are going to become... And out of you will come nations. Amen? You, 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 but the thing is that he and his wife were barren. Now, can you imagine God coming to a, a church, like a small church, like us, and he starts to speak through the prophetic word, and he's starting to say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we know that we are not the only church, please. There are many people that God is going to use in this end time. But this is a part of the vineyard that we're in. So God comes and he starts to speak to us. And, and you know, in our mind, in our mind, we're thinking, my God, how could this ever happen? How would this ever happen? But you see, Abraham, when he got the name Abraham, the word Abraham, The name Abraham meant father of many nations. So when they walked up to Abraham and they said, what's your name? And he said, my name is father of many nations. See, we just hear the word Abraham. No, he was saying, my name is father of many nations. And so they'd look at him and they'd say, but you're barren. People might look at us and they might say all kind of things about us. They might say this, I don't care what they say, because God's word is more powerful than anything that any man or any woman or anybody on this planet or any demon spirit will ever say to you. God will have his way. 
Now, Abraham and Sarah, because of the body, soul, and spirit, though God himself had spoken to Abraham and said these words, the first time that they heard it, they thought, this is a joke. Sarah laughed. Friend, I want to tell you, we might be laughing at some things that they're going to come and shock us. Amen? I think Sarah got the shock of her life. Amen? How many people believe that? <laughs> she would have really got a shock when she found out. And, and the thing is that we've got to understand that God's Word is still alive. And, and He's going to have a powerful church. He is going to have a people on this planet that know Him and know the power of His resurrection. We can talk about the resurrection, but we've got to understand what was the exceeding greatness of His power that He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him far above principalities and powers and dominions and might and seated Him at His own right hand. Oh, my God. I want to tell you, friends, we've got to stir ourselves with that stuff and we've got to keep saying what God says about it until we are fully convinced and fully persuaded that whatever God says, He is able to perform. He can do whatever He wants to do. And I'm believing that we're going to see miracles. I believe we're going to see healings. I believe we're going to see great deliverances. Because God said it, not because Neil says it, but because God says it. The trouble is we come in line with man and not with God. Man says this is impossible, but God says all things are possible. Man might say it's over and done with, but God says I am not finished yet. I've finished with, the, with your deliverance. I've finished. I've done everything you need. But I want to tell you, I am still going to build my church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. And you see, Abraham would have had a problem because here's Abraham now and people there because names were very, very important. It meant father of many nations. So every time he spoke, oh, my name is Abraham, it was a challenge to him. It would have hit him in the face. He would have realized that, he's, that, he, that he hasn't had any children. But God made a promise. Then because their body, soul and spirit, they start to help God. The trouble with the church today is we're trying to help God. We're trying to be politically correct. We're trying not to offend people. I want to tell you, Jesus offended. <laughs> Amen? And he didn't just, you know, do things. He offended their religious beliefs. He, he offended their unbelief. He, he offended their hardness of heart. He offended the things that were stopping them from entering in because he loved the world so much that he died for us. And it's his great desire that we enter into the fullness of God. Amen? We are so far short, as Peter was saying. But God is bringing us to that place. I mean, I am not, I, I, I'm not disappointed, but I am disappointed. <laughs> I am anxious. I want to see it. I, I want to see the power of God so much. I want to see the anointing. I love the anointing. I love the, how many people love the presence of God? To be in the presence of God is so important. And Abraham and Sarah, so they try to help God out. And, and so Sarah says, well, look, I'm, I'm past the age. Can I say this? When God first spoke to Abraham and Sarah, they had the ability within themselves to reproduce what God said. But they, because of the time, it went on and on and on. They got to a point where Abraham was... His body was dead, and Sarah was not only, she was a double whammy. She'd never had a child, and now the deadness of a womb. And so here, here's, a, here's an impossible situation. And we, we look at the world today, we look at what's happening in, in Europe and, and all over the place, and it looks like, and, and the people are now on the news are, are starting to, to speak doom and, and more recessions and goodness knows what else. And I want to tell you, that can run panic in your heart. But I want to tell you this, some people will trust in chariots, some will trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, hallelujah. We will remember what God says. And friend, I want to tell you, if you do not remember what God says, you you will go down the gurgler. You will panic. And what happened to Abraham and Sarah is they began to panic. How can this happen? Prior to that, Abraham obviously still uh, had the ability to reproduce. Sarah said, I, I'm barren. I can't reproduce. I'll tell you what, we'll bring in Hagar. We'll bring in my, my maidservant. We'll bring in, and we'll, we'll help God out. 
But you know, the thing is, friend, a lot of the things that man's doing today to help God build his church is destroying the church. Come on. Come on, you don't have to clap just because I'm happy, because I'm telling the truth. <laughs> no. I want to tell you this God does not need helpers, <laughs> but he needs helpers. <laughs> he wants people to work with him, not try to tell him what to do. Not to, not to you know, man, it, it, it's crazy some of the things that I'm hearing today. But anyhow, here, here's, the, here's this man of God and this woman of God, and they bring the Ishmael, they bring him through, and we know the trouble that that's caused now, amen? See, Ishmael in the church will destroy the church. Man's uh, way will kill the church. Some of the things that man's trying to bring into the church will only destroy the church. It will take out the power of God. It will take out the anointing of God, and it will lead it in the wrong direction. Political correction does have to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. These elections next weekend are very, very important. I pray that this church would pray with their, would, would vote with their conscience. Would vote for, for a Christian people, amen. Would vote for somebody there that's going to uphold the name of Jesus. And not have, uh, have some Illuminati or some Club of Rome or some big hierarchy or something like that controlling them. Because most of the major parties are controlled. Some of the parties are demon-possessed. The lies that's going on today is atrocious. Blatant lies. They try to destroy the, the hand of God. But here is Abraham now and it comes to a place where God comes again. And friend, let me say it again. We need to hear the prophetic voices. We need to have an ear that hears what God is saying in this hour. We need to be so conscious of God's presence. We need to allow God to have His way in our lives. We need to allow the Spirit of God to lead us and guide us and direct us. Because friend, if we don't, the enemy will lead us into deception. The Bible says, I don't want you to be unaware of Satan's cunning devices. We've got to be in a place where worship and praise and the Word of God is the most powerful thing. Amen. I, I want, I don't, I will, if we go for all day, friend, the next mob that come in after two o'clock, they'll have to push us to the side. If the presence of God comes, I'm staying. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. They can just push us to the side and we'll just have our little shindaringdi, whatever, has shandamundi, whatever we're having over there. If we, don't have to, if we don't get a chance to preach and just God comes in and starts speaking to us by His Spirit and by the anointing and people start uh, being touched, friend, I want to tell you, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that smashes the walls down. It's, it's the anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. I don't know about you, but we need the anointing. I want the anointing of God, hallelujah, more than anything else. I am excited about the future. I'm excited about what God can do. I believe that God will build His church and that the gates of Hades will not prevail against Him. I believe, let me, I want to read this to you again, this passage, so that we can just catch a bit of a glimpse and perhaps work on it in our own lives and really, uh, I, I believe it's so very, very important. Abraham, who is the father of all, of, of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Number one, I want you to understand it's God who makes us. I can't go to seminaries and anything like that and everything to become something that I'm not. I could go to the to this school and that school and never and come out, I don't know what. I just got to be led by the Spirit and do what God wants to do. Amen. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Friend, I want to tell you it's time for us to start to rise up and call some things that be not as though they were. Amen? On Tuesday night, that's what we do. We pray in the Spirit. 
We call those things that be not as though they were. We're believing for a righteous government. Amen. We're believing for God to have his way. I want to encourage you to come Tuesday night before this election. If you love Australia, if you believe in Australia, give Australia an hour of prayer and come along and pray and believe God that God would do something so dynamic and so powerful that would shock this nation to its back teeth. Amen? There's a wind blowing around here. It might be the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You know, it could have been just like this on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Might have been saying, what is that wind? Where's that coming from? Oh, shut wind. <laughs> it gives life to the, to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became, friend, in contrary to what we're seeing around us, we've got to believe again, amen. We've got to believe again that God's going to raise up a great generation, a mighty church, hallelujah, a church powerful, strong, and hallelujah, amen. Because that's what God wants to do. In contrary to hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations, so that we might become what God wants the church to become, amen. We can play our part. According to what was spoken, friend, read in the word of God what God says that he speaks, what he says is going to happen. Whatever he says, friend, get a hold of the word of God and that what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred year old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Friends, start to give God glory. If you're not healed, give God glory, hallelujah. And believe that whatever God says about healing will be your portion. Give God the, in contrary to hope, in hope believe. In contrary to what you're seeing, believe. God calls, uh, speaks to the dead and calls them alive. God calls those things that be not as though they were. Give God glory, hallelujah. I, I'm not worried about what I see. I'm giving God the glory, hallelujah, because I know what he said. He will bring to pass. Hallelujah. He is going to have a voice on this planet. He is going to have a people on this planet. Did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what He, God, had promised, God was able to perform. I want to tell you, this is how, how Abraham and Sarah could be raised up to produce the Isaac, hallelujah. This is how the church will rise up being fully convinced, being fully persuaded that what God has spoken, he is able to perform. And then God calls those things that be not as though they were. And he talks about a glorious church, a powerful church, a church without spot or wrinkle, a church who know him and, and know the name, which is above every name, that call upon that name, that worship under, that, under the Shekinah glory, where the glory of God will come down and people will be set free in Jesus' name. I want to tell you, I believe I'm speaking to some people here today that in a sense, you have lost a bit of hope. There's things there that you're seeing and you're noticing and you're watching and, and, and it brings a bit of uh, unsettling inside you. I want to tell you, friends, that can be the stirring of God. Don't take it as a negative. Take it as a positive, hallelujah, that you'll get on your face and you'll pray and you'll call down fire from heaven, hallelujah. The, the sleeping giant called the church is awakened by the fire. It begins to stir, hallelujah. I believe that there's a stirring going on. And I don't know about you, if you cannot feel the stirring you must be dead <laughs> oh hallelujah oh hallelujah friend he had to come to this place God wants to more than anybody else set people free God more than anybody else wants to see revival But this man had to overcome the negatives of life, the trials, 
the things that, that, that hit us, that he had to say, God, I believe. I believe. My body might be dead. Sarah's womb is dead. But God, because you spoke it, you can bring it to pass. Then God could do what God said he would do. Amen. Let me say it again. Then God, not Neil, not the AAG, not the DOG, not the O or whatever else, but then God could do what God said he would do. In other words, God had to bring Abraham and Sarah to a place. Okay, hear me here. God had to bring Abraham and Sarah to a place in their faith in their believing, so he could do what he said he would do. How many years ago? Hey, some people, 25, 10, but anyhow, for those many years, he was preparing. I want to tell you, I believe that God is not slack. He's preparing the church, amen? He's pre can you feel the pull of the Holy Ghost? Come on, please, don't. I'm not just looking for, can you, can you know what I mean? Can you, there's a different atmosphere in this place that was here 12 months ago. Is that okay? Can, is, am I just making jokes or is that, a, there's a different, let me say it here, there's a different atmosphere in this place than there was 12 months ago. Why? Because God is bringing us to the place where he can do what he said he was going to do 2,000 years ago. I will build my church. Not your church. <laughs> not this one. Not that. No, my church. I belong to his church. Amen. Perhaps we should call the church his church. <laughs> and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I believe that God is going to give us the keys of the kingdom. It's going to give us keys that will open up doors. Whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I'm going to ask us all to stand to our feet today. God in his mercy. God, I pray today that somehow or other you can catch what I'm saying here today. That God had to bring Abraham and Sarah from there to there so he could do what he said he could do. And can I say this? He couldn't do what he wanted to do while they were there. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying this as plain as I can. He had to take them from there to there so he could do what he said he could do when they were there. <laughs> are, we catch, are we catching this? And he's taken you... <laughs> from where you were to some place <laughs> so he can do what he said he would do. Amen? And Abraham beca became the father of many nations. Amen? Abraham became the father of many nations. I'm going to ask you here today because I believe I honestly believe in the anointing. Anybody notice that I believe in the anointing? And I believe it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing breaks strongholds. The anointing stirs up gifts. The anointing does a work. Because sometimes we have been overshadowed by wrong thinking. And Abraham and Sarah had wrong thinking in them that had to be overcome. So I'm going to open up this altar this morning, and I'm going to ask you if you're here today, and honestly, sincerely, you know that you need to, to be released or, or that which God spoke to you about there <laughs> that hasn't come to pass yet, that you have said it will never happen or you've put it aside, that God is still working with you. And he's got to bring you to this place. 
Laying on of hands will help the process. <laughs> that makes sense? Amen? Amen? So if you know what I'm talking about, I want you to just quickly come out the front here. That God could somehow or other just open up things. Oh, ah, ha, ha, shakabundi. Don't let the flesh win on your life right now. Come on, let the Spirit of God get hold of you.